One day in September 1911, after a smooth inaugural summer season, Olympic was departing Southampton on her fifth voyage. Under the command of a harbor pilot, she was cruising down the Solent with 1,300 passengers on her way to pick up another 800 in Cherbourg in Queenstown. The weather was fine with a moderate breeze, and to exit the Solent and head for Cherbourg, Olympic had to execute a complicated S-turn. Under the command of harbor pilot George Bauer, Olympic sounded her whistles to announce the maneuver. Once the turn was complete, Olympic's turbine engine, which powered the central propeller and was not used during the turn, was reactivated and the ship began accelerating toward a speed of 20 knots. By now, the naval cruiser HMS Hawk, which had been traveling eastward up the Solent, was practically running parallel to Olympic. Captain Edward Smith aboard the Olympic was observing Hawk from the starboard bridge wing. By then, Hawk's bow was even with Olympic's bridge and seemed to have been overtaking the liner, giving Olympic the right of way. Suddenly, the Hawk's bow veered to port. The Hawk's commander ordered the cruiser hard to port, which, in terms of tiller commands, meant to turn the ship to starboard. But the Hawk turned in the wrong direction. In an attempt to correct, the crew realized that the steering gear was jammed. The commander ordered the engines to be stopped, but it was too late. The Hawk's bow sliced into Olympic's quarter. Olympic's watertight doors were quickly shut, and only two watertight compartments were flooded. The passengers occupying the cabins where the Hawk struck the liner were enjoying the public spaces of the ship at the time, and, remarkably, there were no injuries. With the efforts of the crew and pumps, the HMS Hawk was saved from sinking too. But Olympic was unable to continue her voyage, and had to return to Southampton. Her passengers would have to find another ship to take them across the Atlantic. Meanwhile, White Star Line had a heavily damaged ship to fix, and every day that was spent repairing her cost money and resulted in lost revenue. Ultimately, Olympic would not return to service for six expensive weeks. As to who was at fault for the accident, well, the court ruled in favor of the Navy and placed blame entirely on the Olympic. The argument was that the abrupt turning of the Olympic, combined with the large amount of water she displaced, sucked the hawk into her wake. If the Olympic had already completed her complicated maneuver though, and was building speed on a steady course, and the hawk, which had been traveling at a consistent speed, was overtaking the Olympic, then the hawk would have been obliged to steer clear of the liner. Perhaps though, the hawk could not have steered clear, due to the reasons previously stated. The events surrounding Titanic's departure from Southampton seven months later, in which Titanic's suction seems to have caused the liner SS New York to break free from her mooring and nearly collide with Titanic, might be validation for the Royal Navy's claim about the dangers of such large ships operating in close quarters with smaller ships. <laughs>